Let's get to AI and energy first. $92 billion worth, that's, uh, uh, that, that's a lot of money there. And I think last time we talked, we were already starting to get into this. We were talking about the restarting of Three Mile Island. This is Correct. just a continuation of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I'll take issue with one comment the president uh, made, but he's, his, his plans are directly aimed at addressing it. Uh, the U.S. is ahead of China in AI on many, many fronts. Chips, uh, software, um, the application of AI. Where we are behind right now is in power. Uh, we estimate that there is about 38 gigawatts of dispatchable baseload power available on the U.S. grid right now, being consumed at about a pace of about 8 gigawatts per year. So that means in about four and a half years to power our our demands for AI, to power the reindustrialization of the U.S., to power EVs, um, we're going to run out of baseload power on the U.S. grid in about four and four and a half years. So we push, need to be building Is this now. push too late, though? Well, <laughs> yes. So China has been building for the past decade. They've doubled the amount, of, uh, the amount of baseload power on their grid in the past year, or past 10 years. We've barely moved it a, a few percentage points. So we, the, the area where we need to play catch up is in power infrastructure and the related demand. Um, and ultimately, we believe uh, would, uh, something that Sam Altman has said, that the cost of intelligence is going to converge to the cost of power. So it oh. is critical that we solve our power needs here in the United States, well, uh, in the United States. And no surprise that he's doing it at Carnegie Mellon in Pennsylvania. Um, what does Pennsylvania have a lot of? Natural gas. Yep, sure. And, and so sure. certainly that is right up there, Allie, and, and it's also a swing state, so it's good politically. I was going to say, right ahead of midterms uh, next year, and this is all happening at a time when, you know, China, for its part, on its part, right, has probably one of the most aggressive nuclear rollout programs on the planet. Correct. And this is the, uh, I guess, the, the probably the, the, the best near-term clean solution for powering AI. Yeah, no, exactly. So the intermediate period will be powered by natural gas, um, gas-powered turbines, slowing down um, the shutting down of coal-fired plants. But if we're really going to solve this problem long term, we need to be at nuclear. Yeah. First fission, but eventually fusion-based uh, reactors. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> With the power situation, you know, with the U.S. lagging uh, behind China and so on, what is the right e equity exposure in all this? Because the story has been that the U.S. Re really needs to upgrade, but, you know, the market actually sort of moves in sort of a sequence in all this, right? So is it uh, the story for 2025 and the nuclear stocks? I mean, the, you, at some point... A couple of years ago, utilities moved like AI stocks as well. Yeah. Well, certainly I think the, the utility companies, um, the companies that supply energy, the natural resources, the uh, natural gas, um, the gas-fired turbine companies, uh, so the likes of a GV, Vernova, those companies are going to do very, very well. And I think investors have been sniffing that out. And we've seen, uh, to your point, um, some of the independent power producers, some of the traditional utility companies um, do quite well on that. Um, so I think investors need to have exposure to that now in advance of the significant demands that are coming. But you don't have to be a wizard to figure out what's coming. We are seeing very substantial demands uh, for AI infrastructure already in the, in the plans of, of, out of an open AI with their partnership with Oracle and SoftBank. They want to deploy $500 billion of in infrastructure in the next five years to power just their models alone. Meta is building a data center the size of Manhattan. So very, very substantial uh, power demands, industrial infrastructure demands um, are coming, and investors will be positioning for that now. Now, critically, they need to know that the building is going to continue, and ultimately the usage of AI is going to continue. And so every earnings season out of the tech space is critical on that front. Investors are paying close attention to what the hyperscalers are saying about their continuing building. They're listening to what NVIDIA is saying about the demand for chips. And then they're listening to companies in the tech space and beyond the specs tech space about how much usage of AI is occurring. All of this is connected together. Mm. Yeah, so let's talk about NVIDIA versus Huawei in the Chinese market. So the, the narrative has been when this uh, H20 export controls 
were first introduced by the Trump administration, market is freaking out and they're saying, oh my gosh, Huawei is making you know tremendous amount of te technological advancements and perhaps it's not going, it's going to get to a certain point where China doesn't really need NVIDIA, Nvidia chips. I mean, so what is your high level thoughts on China and when it comes to AI chips, what kind of um, advancements catch up has uh, China played so far and what do you think about this narrative around with Nvidia chips and not making their way to China that perhaps it's going to really sort of ramp up a China's a self-sufficiency um, narrative and the mantra that at some point and it will actually be a nearer term that China doesn't really really need to rely on Nvidia's of the world yeah, well, certainly um, Huawei in China is making progress on chip development and AI. Uh, but ultimately, we mm -hmm. want to win the global opportunity for uh, AI infrastructure. So we want our tech stack, our chips. We want CUDA. We want our data, our uh, hyperscalers, our model builders to win. So um, making it hard for not only China, but also many of our allies around the world to get access to NVIDIA chips didn't make a lot of sense. Now, I get why uh, the Trump administration decided to use the H20 chips as a bargaining chip, if you will, in the discussions with China over tariffs and trade. Um, but ultimately, um, they're doing the right thing, we believe, by backing off of that and allowing China to get access to the H20s. And we know Chinese model builders want to use the Western chips. They've had access to the Huawei chips and they have still been uh, very much leaning into the NVIDIA chips that they have. And why is that? Because there's a rich ecosystem of software and support and capabilities around the Western stack and we don't want to lose control of that. So uh, we're doing the right thing by allowing China to get access to the H20s, we believe. Mm. And how much of this do you think is about setting global standards? Which country of which uh, which company of which country getting to set to the global standard for AI chips? Because, uh, you know, people are talking about what Intel was doing in the 90s and really that support of software and technology superiority for the United States that it managed to bring. And I think that is what NVIDIA could be doing with its ACUDA system as well. So if the U.S. makes it hard for other countries to get their hands on NVIDIA chips, then it doesn't really really work. It cannot really be setting standards. Yeah, this, you're, you're exactly right. This is all about setting the standard and ultimately being the platform. And the platform players in tech have proven year over year, or year after year after year that the platform winners win. They win. They, it's usually a winner take most. Those are the, the companies that can secure the economic rents and ultimately um, do well and then set when standards change again, set the next standards. So you're absolutely right. This is critical uh, to having U the U.S. win this. We want uh, NVIDIA to win this and that we want them to be the ones setting the standards. You know, Josh, I'm sure compliance uh, prohibits you from talking about individual names, but just, uh, uh, you know, if we could just sort of have a conversation around what this all means for NVIDIA. Ahead of the president saying, okay, you can go ahead, uh, Jensen, and continue, uh, resume shipping H20 ships to China. NVIDIA was already a $4 trillion market cap company, the biggest in the world, uh, right? When the first, uh, the first ban on H20s took place, I think NVIDIA got hit with, a, I think, a $5 billion write-down, right? Yep. Now that they're allowed to go back into China, it's going to be a $5 billion write-back, if, if not more. If, if, if not more, yeah. yeah. I think what we're learning is that the, the demand for model building, and we think we're going to soon start to learn the demand for AI usage, is insatiable. And so uh, I think we're still in the very early days of uh, the infrastructure build out. So we, we see very fantastic prospects okay. for companies like NVIDIA right. um, because they and if they control the standard um, at a time of big building, then then I think uh, I think companies like that can do very, very well. All right.